I'm sewing a 1960s dress pattern and I'm basting ribbons to a dress that isn't the dress I'm sewing. Let's find out why. Welcome back to Tasha Could Make That. Today I'm sewing Simplicity 4432, an early 1960s dress pattern that I've sewed a handful of times already. But what I've never actually done is add ribbons and bows to the bodice like one of the views in the pattern, so I'm finally trying it out today. Would it be best in a solid colored fabric? Yes. Would it be best if I was adding ribbons to the skirt like the original pattern? Maybe also yes. Am I doing either of those two things? No, I am not. I'm using this busy floral print, which I'll link in the description, and I don't have anywhere near enough ribbon or desire to add it to the skirt too. But I'm plowing ahead anyway, so I guess we'll find out soon if I decide this dress is a hit or a miss. I did all the usual prep work for sewing this dress while I contemplated what I actually wanted to do with the ribbon. I cut out the fabric, stay stitched the bias curves of the neckline and armholes, prepped and sewed all the darts, and sewed on the side seam pockets to the skirt pieces. I meant to omit the front darts until I pinned the ribbon on, so this came with the bonus step of cursing myself for forgetting that. And then, plotting time for the ribbon. Okay, so here's what's up. I have my bodice, I have already sewed the darts, which was a bad call. I meant to not sew the darts, but I already did it, so I'm gonna work with it anyway. <laughs> and I am thinking that I'm gonna try and do two or three lines of ribbon across the upper bodice. And I, I have to decide if I think I'm gonna like this or not. I, it's kind of like a one-shot deal because once I commit, I have committed. So I have a thought for how I can kind of like test this out a little bit. Okay, here's where we stand with this. I am wearing the same bodice in a different dress and I pin on two rows of ribbon. I also stabbed myself in the face when I tried the dress on. This is my life. <laughs> but I wanted to see what this might look like. Obviously this is a different fabric, but I think this is actually cute enough to potentially try this and baste it on the real dress. I, I'm loath to put together the whole bodice and baste it just to try it on, even though I know the dress fits, so that's why I don't want to do it. But I don't know if I'm going to love the ribbon, so that's why I should do it. So I'm going to. But I, I don't think three rows will actually fit well with my... Oops, I'm all attached here. Um, I don't think three rows is going to fit well. I think it might be too busy, but I, I'm not certain yet. So the basting should tell me more, but this is at least enough to make me think that I potentially still like this idea. So I'm going to carry on. Okay, so I took the dress off and here is, <laughs> here is the chaos that ensues when I'm trying <laughs> to plot something out. I've got ribbon all over the place, but here is that bodice and this is the same bodice. And I kind of liked, kind of liked the two. So I think I'm going to pin baste it onto the bodice. I actually think that I'm going to go with the, this ribbon color. I was originally going to go with this green and both of them match. This looks darker than this green just by a smidge, but this is kind of, kind of matches the light or it's sort of in between. So I, I think I'm leaning towards this one, but I'm going to pin base this on because I'm I'm worried this is a a pretty fine weave of this fabric and it shows pinholes really easily. So I'm just gonna pin base it on as opposed to doing it on the sewing machine. And then I'm gonna sort of half acidly base this together, I think, and try it on because <laughs> I don't want to base the whole thing together because I know it fits, but I need to know if I'm going to like the ribbons or not. And I, even though, so I am, I am not much of a bow person. I did make this tiny, cute little, little test bow. And initially I thought, boy, that's kind of silly looking. And then I laid it on the ribbon and I was like, oh, but I like that. So I may actually do a little bow. So uh, we'll see where this is going to go shortly. Now I could have consulted the original pattern piece to see where the ribbons were placed on the front bodice, but I literally just eyeballed it based on what I decided looked good. Plus the pattern calls for half inch trim and mine was closer to a quarter inch anyway. I used the underarm notch as a reference and chalk and a ruler to make sure my lines were perfectly straight. And I used silk pins to pin base them on because they're a little thinner than normal pins. This was a lot more difficult to do than I expected because ribbon is so slippery. So this took a while. And then to try it on, I basted it all together. Kinda. 
Okay, here is the update where we're at. So I have pin basted the spots together and um, I use basting in a very loose sense of the word. I would say it's overly generous to call this basting. I just slap some pins on the shoulder seams and the side seams completely open in the back and I'm calling that good enough. <laughs> but I, I, think, I think this is nice. I think I'm gonna like this. I hope I'm gonna like this because I think I'm gonna do it and if I don't like it, tough. But <laughs> I have the little, one little bow pinned on that I did. I might make them a little bit bigger. I think I'll do two, just like the pattern. And I think, I do think that this is a better green. The other green is a little bit too dark. This one is a little bit lighter, but I think it's gonna look nice. So I'm gonna commit to it. And if I don't like it, you know, it's just a couple of ribbons. It's not that big of a deal. But I think, I think overall this, I think this will work. I'm hopeful. The plan was to sew just inside the edge of the ribbon in that little kind of edging you can see with matching thread. Now I'm not usually one to wing this kind of thing, so I did a couple of tests first to decide the best way to do this because it's not really easy to sew that close to the edge of something, particularly when it's that small and that slippery. I first tried using this foot, which is, I don't know, I think it's used for patchwork, but I use it if I need to really see what I'm doing as it leads up to the needle. It was fine, but not really good enough for me, so I went with my edge stitch foot and that worked out perfectly. So onto the slightly terrifying job of sewing on two tiny little ribbons in perfectly straight lines, but all went well. I mean, other than running out of bobbin thread at a key spot, but hey. And then it was enough fussing with ribbons for a while and time to assemble the bodice for real. Which was the usual steps for me on a simple dress like this. I sewed the shoulder seams of both the bodice and the facings, sewed, trimmed, and graded the neckline and the armhole seams, and sewed the side seams. Of course, pressing all that along the way. I'm not actually going in depth on any of that in this video because I'm doing an all-in-one facing tutorial coming up soon, so you'll get to learn all the little details on how I assembled this and I used this dress in that. Close to getting to look at the mostly assembled dress and playing with the ribbon bows, but I have to finish up that skirt and attach it to the bodice first. Once I had the skirt side seam sewed, I started to run two lines of basting stitches for the gathering like I normally would, and I was all proud of myself because I didn't want to run out of bobbin thread, so I switched it to a random contrast color thread. But then realized that because this fabric shows pinholes pretty easily, I should switch to the zigzag method instead, which is inside the seam allowance entirely. And it didn't dawn on me that I had literally just changed the bobbin thread to a dark color a minute ago. And so that dark green zigzag stitching is staying on the inside of this dress forevermore. <laughs> oh well. Then I sat down to make some tiny little bows and wow, that was... That was annoying is what that was. <laughs> they would have been a lot easier if I just tied a frickin' bow, but no, I had to go and decide they'd look nicer if they looked a little more streamlined. I don't know what you call them, like flat bows, whatever. Making these bows probably sucked two years off my life. Okay, we have two teeny tiny, excruciatingly annoying to make little bows, and I'm ready to decide how I wanna place them on the bodice, which I think is looking great. Oh, I also decided that when, maybe I shouldn't point with my middle finger. For extra matchingness of this green ribbon color, I'm going to make a belt buckle in the same color to tie everything in together a little bit more. There's not actually really much question as to where these are gonna go because they won't have a tail. I'll cut that off, but they're gonna go basically right around there in part to cover up <laughs> the tiny bit of extra stitching where my bobbin thread ran out, but also because this is actually where they are more or less on the pattern. And you know, they won't have, they won't have that little tail thingy there. God, they're so, in I can barely even hold the damn things. They're so fussy, but it, yeah, like that. I think that's, I think that's gonna look grand. Oop, <laughs> there it goes. Okay, kinda sorta like that. So ribbons and bows sorted out, time to finish up the rest of the dress, which at this point was just the zipper and hemming. I say just as if that's short, but you know, the zipper takes a while. Then I super carefully pinned the left side to make sure everything matched up to the right since I'd matched the floral print when cutting out my fabric. I did have a bit of a snag that I had to fix here. Even as careful as you think you're being, sometimes you realize things end up a little wonky. And I noticed at this point that the left side of my back bodice was a little shorter compared to the right. 
Thankfully, I had just enough seam allowance left on the inside after trimming to let that out a bit and I could continue on. And after top stitching the left side of the zipper, I always love a good zipper print matching reveal. How about you? Hello, can I help you down here? <laughs> Manny. And then we take a pause in the sewing programming to make a matching lime green pearly resin belt buckle. And since I made more resin than I needed, matching earrings too. Now it's just finishing up with the hemming and sewing the dress belt. You can watch my full tutorial on sewing a matching belt for your dresses. I'll link it in a card in the upper right. And she's done. This was a small gamble that I think paid off. I started off thinking maybe I'll like the ribbons and bows, and I really warmed to it the more I mocked things up. In the end, I think they're a really cute addition to this bodice, and it looks great with the floral fabric, and particularly nice with the matching belt buckle that I made. And earrings. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you again soon with more vintage sewing. Bye.